Right, what's going on everyone and welcome back today we're going to be working on input input is pretty much just going to be a a copy and paste from the mouse class pretty much um let's see here put it in here <clears throat> so basically we're going to be doing the exact same thing that any button any button down any button up the same byte codes instead of booleans so that we can uh we can make it run a little faster except for we're not going to be using eight we're going to be using a an actual larger number because there's more keys on your keyboard than eight uh let's see here so one thing i didn't explain whenever i made the mouse class was that eight is your about your standard gaming mouse uh if you want to make it a little bit faster you can actually just change that to like three or something i believe uh, what is it? Left mouse click is is zero. Right mouse click is one. Uh, scroll wheel click is two, I believe. So if you just want to change that to three, you can. It makes it a little bit faster, not by much, but yeah, you can always do that. And we're gonna be. I'll be discussing the same thing whenever we create this input class because uh, we're going to be supporting I believe it's Spanish and English keyboards so it's going to be double the size so if you only want English or only want Spanish or only want uh, Chinese or whatever you know it it's whatever you can adjust the the size so that it doesn't consume so much for the loops down here all right so let's go ahead and get into that so in here we'll create a new class and call it input And with input, we need a constructor. Or actually, no, we don't even need a constructor. We're going to up here put uh, ex extends glfw key callback. And of course, it's not going to give me anything to import it. Awesome. All right. So import org dot lightweight Java game library dot glfw dot glfw key call. Might as well import glfw in general as well. So org dot lightweight Java game library glfw dot glfw dot star. There we go. And that will import all of that. And Add unimplemented methods. Put that there, put that there. All right, so right here we're going to say private static byte any key equals zero. So any key is automatically going to start as zero. Same thing with any key down, any key up. 
and then it's going to be exactly the same. You can just copy and paste if you don't feel like typing it out. By any key up equals zero. So then the next thing we need to do is and we don't have to make these public, but I think I made them. Yeah, I made them public in here. You know what? Let's let's make these private. Private, private, and private. So we don't really need to access those outside of the script without using the actual methods. So go private static byte array called keys, which is going to equal new byte and like I said I'm going to be using Spanish and English so it's going to be 65,536 characters all right so really quick before we go on I'm going to go ahead and explain this so if you're using a specific keyboard and let's say your keys start at, uh, let's just make it an even number, say it starts at 20,000, right? And there's, let's say, 20,000 keys for your specific keyboard. So you would just put 20,000 in here, and whenever you're getting the key and you're trying to access the specific point in this array <clears throat> you would say uh, keys key minus 20,000 and that would give you the specific key that's in that array. That way you don't have to use the whole 65,000. But you are going to have to know where the keyboard starts at and how many keys are in that keyboard. So that's something you're going to have to look up because, well, there's tons of different languages out there and I am not going to cover them all. But that's a way if you want to further optimize what we're doing. And it doesn't it doesn't really matter because it really doesn't I mean it doesn't really change the frame rate or make it that much that much better, but it does make it a little bit better and it is something that you can optimize if you truly want to. So let's do keys down and keys up and last thing we need is the iteration variable so private static and i all right so that ends it for the variables now the first thing we need to do is we need to create a reset method just like we do here and it's going to be almost exactly the same so down here say public static void reset and in here we'll just do our normal loop so i equals zero i is lower than keys down dot length i plus plus and then we're just going to say keys down i equals zero 
then we'll do the same loop for keys up Then we need to set uh, any key to equal zero, any key down to equal zero, any key up to zero. And that ends the reset method. Now we need to go into the actual invoke method which is uh, just setting these values to whatever is going on so in here we're going to be doing literally the exact same thing here so I'll just go ahead and copy this oops Copy and paste right here. I can say any key, uh, change this to keys down, key, key. And you just change wherever it says button, just change the button to key. Really simple. Keys. Keys. Key. And that ends the invoke method. And so now let's go ahead and do the uh, the holding keys. So it would just be any key, get key, and uh, a little special thing that we're going to be doing here in just a second. And I will show you that. So public static boolean. We're still going to be returning a boolean, any key, and all we're going to be doing for this is we are going to return any key equals equals one. And here we are going to uh, get the key. So get key int key code and here we will return keys key code equals equals one so for this you need to know the exact key code kind of there is pre-built methods that already have the key codes in there and we will be explaining that in just a little bit after we're done with this script because afterwards we're going to go into test and we are going to put these input ver uh, input methods uh, down for whenever we call them so like i said we're going to be doing something a little special something that normal tutorials really don't put in there and what this is is it allows us to pass in a character instead of a key code so if we're feeling lazy or we're just testing something really quick we don't really care about the optimized method for it we don't have to know the exact key code. All we have to know is whatever character we're going to be uh, pushing. This makes it a lot easier. It's shorter. We don't have to put a, as much crap in there. So it's 
an awesome method to have. It's just whenever you can avoid it, do so, just to make it, uh, just to make it faster. But for testing purposes and all that stuff, it's it's awesome. So we're going to be taking in a char key code. Now here we're going to be doing the exact same thing we did in the int key code, except for we need to change the char or the character to a key code. And you might think that, well, I can just throw in the actual char and then run it against the keys. Yes, yes, that does work. If we do not have this method at all, inside of test, it would accept us to say input dot get key and then we could just put in a char so say if we push c yes it, it would accept it but the editor or the integer which is returned from the char is not the actual key code so it will not work so keep that in mind that's why we're adding this method because we're going to have to get the actual key code from the char. So in here it's return keys. We're going to be needing a key event dot get extended key code for char and then uh, we need to pass in the key code. And then equals equals one. <clears throat> and that's how you do that. So this method right here will convert it into the specific key code for that character. So we can actually just copy this and come down here and paste it twice and at the end it's going to put down at the end and of course come over here and change that to down keys down change these to up or add up to it sorry of just blabbing about what half of this stuff does and it's done so this episode is going to be fairly short I'm going to explain at the end of the video what exactly is going on uh, but we're going to keep this really short <clears throat> so in here I did change this back at the end of the last video so I put a little comment here so that I would not forget to let you guys know that I did change it back to uh, whatever we had the first time for move or er, for rotating it by Delta time so the what we're gonna do here is we're going to add in a little method 
to rotate whenever we're holding a key down. So I'm going to say if input.get key. And uh, I forgot what method it was. Let's see if I can remember. Key event dot nope, nope, that's not it. I don't use this very often, so key event dot there we go. VK underscore and I'll put D. So if we're pushing D on the keypad. I'll have to import that in and this is what you would put normally this gives you the uh, the actual key code for the key D and later on because we don't really need it right now because we do have this this key event that we can use but later we're going to be basically making our own so that we're not using something that is already pre-built because like I like to do we're going to do everything ourselves. I don't like to use other people's stuff alright so that will rotate it clockwise we'll change this to a and A is going to rotate it counterclockwise I think I'll have it should be just that that should be fine um do that I think that's it not subtracting that okay and then that'll that'll go us make us go the opposite direction all right so now that I've shown key events here let's go ahead and add some little debugging to make sure our uh, our character inputs are working correctly. So if input dot get key and I'll just go straight across. So I'll go RTY. So R. So if we push the character R and right here, this signifies a character. If we put quotations, that is a string. We want a character. So if I push R, I'm just going to simply say system.out.println holding R. And that will let me know that I am holding R. Copy this, paste it twice else in front and change that to T and that to Y so if I push T I'm going to say uh, pushed T and this I'm going to change to down this to up and released Y there we go so if I'm holding R it's gonna say that I'm holding R if I push T down it's gonna say pushed T once whenever I release Y it's going to say released Y once uh, oh, 
almost forgot. We need to go ahead and do the things we need to do over here. So mouse.reset. After we re reset the mouse, we're going to reset the input. And we also need to actually create it. So right here, GLF w set key callback and pass in window and new input and import input there we go so then this actually creates it whenever the application is created and in the core, we're resetting it before we actually pull the events. All right, so now everything should hopefully work perfectly. And this is only going to happen at runtime because, well, our test script is not called whenever it's in the editor. So if I push T here, nothing's going to happen. Okay, real quick, uh, this says what between 160 and 190 or whatever. Uh, and it's because I'm running Bandicam. Bandicam's actually taking what splitting my frame rate in half. I've actually got well over 300. What it's running at like uh, 340, I think, without B -cam, or Bandicam on. And this is a really crappy computer. Like, really, really crappy. I'm sure you've seen that throughout the videos. So that's how you know how incredibly fast it is actually running. And with our play button, how fast we're going in and out of play or edit mode and play mode, there isn't that like slight lag beforehand or after. It's it's immediate. So our engine is running just smooth as can be. So let's go ahead and go into play mode. So we're not pushing anything right now. Um, let's go ahead and try to rotate this cube, or this square. I'm going to hold A, and whoa. Apparently I messed up, uh, messed up the negative, but it's whatever, I just put it up there. So, I'm holding D, and it's rotating and stopping as I'm releasing. So, yeah, there you go, that works. So now let's go ahead and test out R, T, and Y. So right here I'm gonna hold R, and it's telling us that it, I'm holding R, it's continuously updating, you can see it down there. Okay, and I released it, and it completely stopped. So it's, it's not doing anything anymore. All right, I'm going to press T, and I'm holding on to it still right now. I haven't even released it still, so you can see that it, it's only going to do it once. I'm going to release it, and nothing. Awesome. All right, so Y, uh, I'm holding it now, nothing showing. I release it, and it says released Y. So yes, everything is working as expected which is awesome. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, this one right here because apparently I did that wrong and I do not want to do it in my head right now so it can just F off. All right so while we're at this point I'm gonna go ahead and explain what's going on. So today, I, or as of this week, I am officially unemployed, which is 
fine. I mean, after this pandemic crap is over, I will go back to work. But in the meantime, um, basically just staying at home, teaching the kids, and being a housewife, I guess. So, uh, some things are probably going to change with the channel itself. It's not going to affect the tutorial, the series at all. Um, I'll still do videos, you know, every Sunday. I may occasionally, depending on how bored I get, make additional videos, but we will see what's going on with that. Um, but I may change, like, possibly the the name of the channel or whatever right now I just use my online handle I might actually use my real name I, I don't know but I may also add a couple more series for for people that that aren't familiar with programming so make a beginner series um, I know my brother wants me to hop over to construct which I don't know if you guys have ever used it before, but I've made a couple plugins for Construct. He's wanting to do a game because he's off as well. <clears throat> but once again, it's none of this is going to be affecting this series, but there may be other things uh, going on. So if you see if you see the channel kind of changing the look or adding different things it's it's not because I'm messing with this series at all so don't don't worry about that so that is the end of this episode uh, next episode I may possibly go into cameras or something because right now we cannot move the camera because well we don't we don't have a camera we're basically just rendering it which a camera is basically just you pass a position into the shader and all you do is you just add the current or you subtract the current position of an object being rendered by the camera's position and that's that's all a camera is it's just a, a simple variable that's it just one vector two so it's it's nothing complicated at all so don't think don't think a camera is something that is uh really that complicated because it's it's really not at all but right now our camera I'll just say it is just sitting in place because we don't have a camera class that defines any specific position that it's at and with the camera we will also add uh, different ways of viewing things so you can actually uh, change the viewport and the layer like the rendering layer or what layers are going to be rendered on this specific camera um, all kinds of cool cool different things you'll also be able to change the matrices so whenever we get into rendering 3d objects into the scene and I know it's 2d engine 3d but some people want 3d objects and I know some people like putting 3d objects in a 2d game so that's why I'm doing it but I'm not gonna add all this the extra 3d stuff it's just going to be basic 3d rendering later so i may start out uh next sunday with cameras but like i said right now it's kind of iffy because uh this week i start unemployment and i really don't I really don't know which direction right now I want to go because I have all this time now and so yeah I don't know we'll see but I will see you next time and hopefully get into some pretty pretty crazy cool stuff 
All right. Stay safe, guys.